بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب ويبعون as the symbols of Allah that leads to the piety of the hearts so adab veneration is very important in deen umar radiyallahu anhu said ta'addabu thumma ta'allamu first learn adab adab etiquette then you can learn so even when it comes to tarbiya of children rules regulations adab and etiquette are very important Zahri used to say, "Kunna naati al-alim, fama nataalam min adabihi, ahab ilayna min almihi." We used to go to the elders, to the mashayikh, to the ulama, and we should seek knowledge and benefit from them. But more than the knowledge that we learned was the adab and the etiquette and the adab that we learned. So the proverb goes, "Al-adab junnatun linnas." This etiquette, courteous behavior, is a shield for people. لا ميراثك الأدب. There is no inheritance. There is no heritage like adab. So uh, we have to understand the value of knowing these places when 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 these places value has. Entered the hearts, then we can become valuable. Nabi Ali Islam said, "Adabni Rabbi fa ahsan taadibi." My Rabb has taught me adab, manners, etiquette, and best manners. The best manners, most exemplary manners. So, adina ladab kulhu is a a a a a synopsis. It's an indication of. What is matlub of Deen? When Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had passed away, then Hazrat Abu Bakr went on the pulpit. So Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to sit on the highest step and give the khutbah. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went to one step lower, and his feet was on a lower step. Again, my Nabi sat in this position here. Yeah? Just adab and respect. That was inherent. It was by nature default. Says so Iman gets stronger. Persons adab and respect, uh, veneration increases. Umar radiallahu anhu, when he became Khalif, he used to go to a lower step, and his foot was on on, on the ground. So again, from 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 the Khulafa Rashidin to the adab of Ambi Ali Musallatu Wassalam. It's a very important thing. A person is going to these Mubarak places, Makkah uh, al Mukarrama, Madinah al Munawwara. Know the value. So, ulama uh, have written Musa alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah subhanahu wa taala to see a fraction of his tajalli, and dur ilayk. So uh, Musa alayhi salam was told that uh, you don't have the capacity. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. فلما تجلى when when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala release a a fragment of his tajalli. خر موسى سعيق موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام fell unconscious. نبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى when he went for Mi'raj. Then he was close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He spoke. Directly to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, was had the istidad to handle the tajalli of Allah at that close range. Musa alayhi salatu salam was on earth, and a fraction. Nabi alayhi salatu salam was in the heavens, and uh, close by, and the tajalli. So what, what ruhaniyat did Nabi alayhi salatu salam have? Allah had given him. To have this capacity to handle that meeting and mulaqat with Rabbul Alamin, 
So Allah say Allah had hidden this tajalli, this anwarat which Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam possessed. Otherwise it is not possible for anybody to be in his company. Allah had made a parda. So this is this Nabi. So if we really had value, then from now, how much durood am I did in every day? Let's fix an amount, what pabandi and istiqamat, how much durood I'm going to read, how much sunnats am I going to practice in my life? And we start inculcating sunnats. I'm going to the Baytullah, I need to be pure, so I need to start making istighfar. So how much thousands of istighfar am I making daily? How much have I abandoned sin? I'm leaving for the Baytullah, so I need to leave sin now. I'm going to the Baytullah and I'm leaving. I need to leave sin as well. Check our obedience and your part. So a person goes for Hajj classes, mashallah, they learn the Masail, which is very important. They start learning the idea as well, very important. But with that, coupled with that, we need to change our perspective and outlook in life. And it starts now. What are my ambitions? Those Mubarak places which housed Anbiya, which housed Sahaba, we read the tarikh of Sahaba and what sacrifices they made, those Sifat needs to start coming in our lives. So the, the, the different organizations have accepted somebody, so he says, yeah, okay, I'm accepted for Hajj. You accepted on earth, but are you accepted in the heavens? Your name has come on the list, but are you maqbool in the law? What do I need to do so I'm maqbool in the law? Aisha radiallahu anha, when she used to hear somebody driving a nail in his house close to Masjid and Nabawi, she should send a message, do not, do not hurt the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not cause the cleave to the Nabi of Allah. So a, a sound, imagine they were so particular that a sound in Madinah Til Munawwara should not cause the cleave to my Nabi. All our amals reports are going to the Nabi of Allah. How much the cleave inconvenience are we causing the Nabi of Allah? The guna that I'm committing. Besides the kar guzari, the amal we do goes to the heavens and azab and calamities are, are decided based on the amal of insan. So how particular they were and how particular we, earth and heavens, difference. Imam Malik who made his mazhab on the ta'amul ahl Medina, whenever he used to relieve himself, he used to go on the outer limit of the haram. He used to go on the outer limit and he said it's disrespectful that a person can relieve themselves in the, the precincts of Medina to Munawwara. When he used to walk, he used to walk next to the walls instead of walking in the middle of the alleys in Medina to Munawwara. Somebody asked him why. He said it is possible that these are the alleys which the feet of Nabi alayhi salatu fell. I cannot allow my feet footprint to come under his footprint. It is be'adbi, it is disrespectful. Imam Shafi asked Imam Malik that you possess very fine horses. Why don't you ride them in Medina to Munawwara? He said it is not uh, befitting and appropriate to spoil the places touched by the Mubarak feet of my Nabi with the hooves of horses. So he never rode a horse in Medina, in the precincts of Medina to Munawwara. Once he had a conversation with somebody and he said, no, the soil is bad, the soil is not good. So. Uh, when Imam Malik heard this, he decreed, he made a fatwa that a person should be flogged 30 lashes and imprisoned. Somebody said, why such a severe punishment? He said, this is light 
he should be killed, he should be beheaded to say that the soil of the Mubarak land of the Nabi where your Nabi is resting is bad, is unpardonable. It's a juram azim, it's a great crime. Like how one poet has said, under the sky there is another place of reverence as arsh nazuktar, more delicate than the throne of Allah. The personalities of Junaid and Bayezid presented themselves here with their breaths restrained as if even to breathe at this Mubarak place is be as if even to breathe is be adbi. When a person knows who are they going to, where are they going to, their walking will be different, their talking will be different, their every action will be different. Going in front of the Baytullah, this is the, the markas of Anwarat Tajalliyat and uh, it, 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 it demands وَمَيْ يُرِيدْ فِيهِ بِإِلْحَادْ بِظُلْمٍ whoever inclines to evil actions yeah, to do wrong we shall cause for them نُذِقْهُ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ a, a, a painful torment Allah bin Ibn Kathir describing the word Ilhad referring to a major sin, so for a person to commit a guna in front of the Baytullah. Normally sin shouldn't be committed, but there even more grave. Why? It is be'adbi, it is disrespectful. Abdullah ibn Umar used to pitch two tents. Whenever he went for Hajj, one was inside the, the Haram, the precincts of Mecca, and the other one is outside. So, uh, Whenever he needed to admonish someone of his family, his khadims, etc., he used to do it outside the haram where that tent was pitched. So if somebody asked him, Hazrat, why two tents? He said, uh, a person who is in a state of anger cannot utter words, Kalla wallah, bala wallah, because it is be'adbi. So I, if I need to take somebody to task, I can't even imagine a person who is in the precincts of the Haram is watching their words, watching... I can't, I can't take anybody to task in these Mubarak places. And that will be like a, a guna, a sin. So the, the pious predecessors, subhanAllah, were so particular about these adab and etiquettes that uh, where have we gone? So adab is uh, part of deen. Uh, the king of uh, India once sent a few gifts to Khalifa Mansur. So there was a physician who accompanied the delegation from India. So uh, the physician addressed Mansur and said, Oh Amirul Mu'mineen, I present to you three medicines. These medicines are only special for kings and it is a lot of value. Only really kings can afford it. So he said, what are these medicines? So the physician said, I will apply such a dye on your beard which will never lose color. And the second one, he said, I will give you a medicine which will enable you to eat a lot and you wouldn't have indigestion. And the third, Khalifa asked, he said, I will give you such strength in your back that you will be able to copulate with your spouse as much as you desire, you will not feel tired or weak. So he paused for a while, he thought, he bent his head, then he raised his head. He said, I thought so, you are a physician, a wise person, but it's not so. I don't need my hair to remain black. Old age has dignity and awe and I don't want to exchange the nur, this is divine radiance of Allah in my face with darkness. And as for eating, overeating results in lethargy and negligence. 
as for with regards to women lust is a branch of insanity to resort to it beyond a certain limit is bad it is harmful return to wherever you come I don't need your medicines I don't need your medicines so sometimes we we presume something is good for us but it's not good for us if we had the vision of akhirat etc then a person would have behaved differently so adab is very important in in deen as a mufti shafi shafi sahab rahmatullah alay was a guest of as that manana said asghar hussein rahmatullah alay so after they had a meal mufti sahab went to the roll the dastar khan mana asghar said what do you want to do with it he said well just dust off the dastar khan so normally you take the dastar khan you roll it and then you you dust it off so he said do you know the adab of dusting off the dastar khan do you know the adab of dusting off the dastar khan so mustab again was surprised he said please tell me how do you dust it hazrat so malana said this is an art is adab this etiquette then he showed hazrat mufti sahab he separated the bare bones means those bones that were completely clean but some bones we had some pieces some fragments uh, etc which can be eaten then pieces of bread were separated and then the small particles were separated the bones which are just bony alone they were fed to the dogs bones which had little but fragments on it etc they were placed where cats would eat then the pieces of bread were placed on areas where birds would come and the small particles of food were placed next to the hole of ants then uh, as i said this food belongs to almighty allah no part of it should be wasted no part of it should be wasted so deen al adab kulluhu there is adab in everything if in in just the remnants of the leftovers of food there so much adab then in in the primary places with primary worship how much more adab and etiquette and this we need to go to ulama al haqq ulama al rabbaniyin learn the different adab learn the different etiquette one scholar alim visited maulana hussein ahmed madani and uh, he was offered fruits so after eating the fruits alim said hasn't permit me to throw the peels away to dispose of it So the madani asked do you know how to throw peels you know just to dispose of it he said no 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 there are poor people in the neighborhood they are neighbors if they are thrown at a place where these people who don't have the luxury of these fruits will see them they will desire them if you dispose of it dispose of it where nobody will see it at all nobody will get a chance to witness it i don't want to give them the inconvenience i don't want to, to give them the inconvenience of seeing the peel of the fruit and then desiring it said about one scholar from south africa as well that he preferred never having a barbecue in his house So people asked him why he said my neighbors will smell the fragrance of the meat and they will desire it and since they cannot have it I desire not to have it So we need to go learn these adab and etiquettes so uh, in these mubarak places there shouldn't be any abuse there shouldn't be any lustful glances this is all adab to enter the haram with eating onions garlic anything with a foul smell uh, tobacco etc the adab of the clothing if a person uh, enters the the haram as well then uh, not to be looking around this way that way even 
uh, harming anybody. So people just push, shove, they're not worried, etc. To uh, in the hotels also, in the bathrooms, we have to make sure very particular that they not face in the Baytul law. So uh, people eat pan, etc. They spit, even on the basins when we're making wudu, we, we, we spit in, we shouldn't be spitting straightwards, but you should spit sideways out of adab and adab and respect for the Baytul law. When a person's wearing socks for some reason, put your feet at a slant. When a person goes to sleep, make sure your bed, which direction it is facing. When a person is making tawaf, not to look at the Baytullah. It is it's, uh, the adab of tawaf, the adab of tawaf. Likewise, to be in a haram without wudu. If a person is in a haram, meeting people, discussing dunya, we bought this here, we did shopping here, against adab, I need forex. A person to raise his voice. So there's a lot of adab for the haram main. We, 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 we need to keep uh, these adab, these etiquettes in mind. And that's when we go to the ulama rabbanin, spend time in sohbet and company of the pious to learn these adab. Simple things, just to give you an example. There was a person who was staying in the US and he was going to return back home to Pakistan. So he said, let me let me surprise my family. So he got leave, he bought the air ticket, and uh, he bought very expensive gifts to take home. So as he landed, he had all his fancy bags, fancy gifts. Obviously, uh, the bags are noticeable, uh, the luggage tags. So the taxi driver noticed this. So he said, this is an opportunity. So as he was driving, he took a detour and uh, he made a few calls and this person was ambushed and he was killed and uh, they were, he buried the body and the person's belongings were taken. So uh, back in the US he didn't come back for work so they contacted the family and then after investigation they realized that actually he did come to Pakistan uh, but unfortunately there was nothing that could be done. So adab and etiquettes, to have notified the family, to let somebody know uh, when traveling, what are the adabs, what are the etiquettes. So these are all important usuls for us to be particular about. May Allah give us tawfiq. The benefit of staying in Medina Sharif, al Medina tu khayrul lahum law kanu ya'lamun. That uh, Mad Medina to the Munora is better for them if only they knew. La yadruha adun ragbatan anha illa abdalallahu fiha man huwa khayrun minhu. No one leaves Medina to Mun al Munora after being disinclined from it wherein Allah replaces the in, one who is better than him. So it never ever should become a burden. A person's looking forward to leaving these places. So when we have love for these places, we'll want to die there. And uh, Allah make us maaf when we got love for dunya, we'd want to die in the places of dunya. وَلَا يَثْبُتُ أَحَدٌ عَلَىٰ Anybody that's there and he, re he remains steadfast, despite the hardships and difficulties, then what's the benefit? That uh, I will intercede on their behalf, I will bear testimony in their favor on the day of Qiyamah.